doing things right, we can actually monitor and communicate, not just monitor ourselves, but communicate with other cities throughout the planet what's happening in each of our cities so that we learn from the success stories how to improve that. We have to reduce the emissions of the harmful uh, chemicals that no, we know affect uh, the health of people. Uh, perhaps the best example is the very small particles, we call them PM 2.5 because they are particles smaller than two, two and a half microns in diameter. We know that those particles, when you breathe, they penetrate all the way into the lungs and that they induce, for example, mortality in vulnerable people, but they also have very important health effects on children. And provided we educate the young people to really take advantage of all this new uh, knowledge that is available uh, in principle worldwide through the internet. So it's very important, yes. I'm very glad that we have this opportunity and have lots of expectations of uh, setting up projects with our colleagues in, in, <coughs> in Sweden because it is really the thing to do. It's, it's the next large revolution that uh, humans are seeing, namely this uh, revolution in, in, uh, uh, comes from the digital world that we can learn much faster and that it, we can improve and learn from success stories from anywhere in the world. As part of this revolution in, in advancement in, in technologies, um, in, uh, we have a change in, in that there are now relatively cheap and, uh, and uh, sensitive, we call them sensors, small sensors that can actually measure uh, reliably air quality. In the past, not uh, too long ago, we had to count on research instruments that were very expensive in, in the uh, tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, whereas now we can talk about uh, sensors that are less than a hundred dollars. So, of course, they have to be tested, they have to be put together. But again, we have some success stories. We know that it can be done and that it works.